Uh, my name is John Ferrandino. Uh, I am the head of media entertainment at Conviva. And my topic today is the economic impact of optimizing the viewer experience um, as, as we see things at uh, Conviva. So what we've seen over the last couple of years is um, our customers have gone from uh, asking, is, is our video up, right? Is content being delivered? And now they're moving to, well, how well are we doing, right? Um, you know, wh what do the end users think? How are we comparing uh, to other peers in the space, our competitors? Um, so basically, this new iterative publishing process is taking hold where our customers demand um, a constant feedback loop. Right? They want to know how they're doing at all times. They want to be able to compare themselves to relevant global data sets uh, to be able to benchmark uh, their performance. And then they want to be able to optimize. And so I say from the Conviva perspective, prior to joining Conviva uh, last October, uh, I was at Limelight Networks for just under four years. Um, and I managed Limelight Strategic Accounts Group, which is about a $40 million business unit, uh, represented about 25 to 30 largest customers uh, in North America. Um, when I was at Limelight, uh, having this be the content delivery summit, uh, our pitch was to optimize the viewer experience by getting content as close as you can uh, to end users. Uh, right? Usually working in a multi-CDN environment, given the fact that most everybody had Akamai. Uh, so, um, but obviously, um, we can only take it so far. Uh, the last mile uh, was definitely not something that Limelight could, uh, could measure or monitor. At Conviva, um, we are able to do that. Right? So what we do on behalf of our customers is we collect, monitor, and aggregate just over about 5 billion streams a month um, from customers such as HBO Go, uh, ESPN, Vivo, CBS, Yahoo, and so on. And so we're able to actually see uh, performance from an end user perspective. So it's end user centric. Um, so we do that, again, like I said, 50 billion streams a year across a little over 400 players. Uh, and the value we bring back to our customers is give them true insight into all of the video internet. So, so jumping into it, um, three basic premises. Hopefully we can all agree on it. Um, viewers have very distinct expectations. Uh, if you meet them, they become loyal customers. Uh, and if you don't, well, they become former customers. So what we've seen, um, so Conviva puts out a viewer experience report a couple times a year. Uh, we've been doing this for about four years now. Uh, and over the course of the last three years, when looking at 2012 to 2014, um, when measuring buffering, screen resolution, uh, and video start failures, um, the overall trend is pretty good. Things are getting better, right? 39% buffering every single video in 2012. Now it's under 29%. 63% to 58% when looking at screen resolution. Um, and video start failures going from 4% to 2.6. Um, but there's still a lot of work to be done, right? There's, a, there's obviously a, 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 a big opportunity uh, to improve the experience. And, um, and uh, that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. So, Kind of diving into uh, the next slide, um, what are the impacts of optimizing the viewer experience, right? If you're able uh, to deliver a high quality experience, uh, which in our minds is low interruption with high fidelity, higher bit rate, um, viewers stay 66% longer, right? If you don't, um, they stay 66% less. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's obvious there's a lot to be gained and there's a lot to be lost. Uh, and, uh, and again, that's how it, you know, we're going to talk a bit more about uh, some of the metrics we see and then how we uh, help some of our customers. So um, we also recently did a consumer uh, study um, figuring out what exactly goes into that experience. Uh, but we wanted to see it from the co consumer perspective. Um, what we discovered, uh, not surprisingly, uh, is when looking at slow startup time buffering or, or fuzzy picture, low, low, low fidelity. Um, buffering is uh, far and away uh, the most, I guess, uh, uh, the largest annoyance in the streaming experience for an end user. Um, it does definitely vary, depend on content type. Um, certainly for video on demand, users are less likely to, uh, to tolerate buffering. Uh, but certainly for live content, it is the biggest thing that we see uh, and the biggest thing that we solve for. Um, but obviously, you want to be able to uh, optimize across all three areas and provide the best possible experience. So 
um, this is meant to be a bit messy, uh, what goes into that experience when you consider things from the publisher's perspective? Um, again, uh, most of the folks in this room haven't, having to be the, uh, we're at the content delivery summit. Um, obviously, CDN is um, a significant uh, um, part of this, but there are several other factors that our publishers, our customers, have to consider uh, when optimizing the view experience. So device, platform, ISP, uh, location, time of day, overall web traffic, um, they're all important. And you need to solve for all of them. Uh, so um, obviously the challenge is to be able to deliver uh, the best possible experience when considering all of the factors that has to go into it. Um, um, it turns out, um, in order to do that, uh, we have to have a highly complex, uh, dimensionally sophisticated view of their environment. And at Conviva, um, measuring 5 billion streams a month uh, across 400 devices, we feel as if we have that unique insight into the video internet. Um, um, and certainly, uh, we're able to look at, because of that perspective, um, which ISP they're uh, accessing the content from, what device they're on, what bit rate they're streaming at, um, which CDNs are delivering the best experience based on time of day uh, and area of the world they're in. Um, and we're able to aggregate all of that information and present it back in a way that allows our customers to make decisions uh, about where they're performing well or where there are challenges and where to invest uh, properly. And that's kind of the, the economic impact part of it is to be able to solve for all of this um, is complex, uh, but for different viewers, there are different, uh, there are different things that obviously impact their viewing experience. If you are trying to watch something and IS8 comes out, uh, like I remember from my days at Limelight, um, the internet's going to slow down. Um, but your users are still going to expect a high quality experience. So it's on you uh, to be able to make sure, to, you know, to, to make sure that you address that situation, to see it ahead of time, and still be able to deliver the best quality experience. It might not mean uh, that uh, you know, your bit rates are going to be at three or four megs to a, uh, you know, to a connected TV device at that time, but you can still de deliver the best possible experience at that moment. Um, and so what our, our view of the world helps our customers make decisions that can impact each and every viewing experience. So um, now that we've talked a little bit about some of the things that go into uh, you know, optimizing the viewing experience or all the various uh, things our customers have to solve for, um, the next question we're typically asked is, well, how do we size up? All right, how do we compare? Figuring out from a contextual data standpoint, um, are we doing well? Are we behind? Um, so, and, and where to invest our dollars? So we typically map out for the customers of Conviv in the room uh, on a quarterly basis or on some type of a uh, you know, uh, semi-annual basis. We'll map them out, their performance out, um, in terms of uninterrupted views and picture fidelity. The higher up and the further to the right you get um, is that highest engagement zone. Um, but if the only picture that you had um, is just your own, how do you know how well you're doing? Uh, how do you compare to, your, you know, to, to everybody else in the space? Now, if you had a bit more data and it worked out this way, uh, it's not so good, right? You're a bit behind. If the picture was painted differently, well, yeah, in this case, yeah, you, you are doing pretty well. Um, so what we're trying to say is to have that global data set to compare and contrast against uh, is incredibly important because it allows you to focus in on the areas where you should be investing. So, so stack ranking, right? This is what we call benchmarking. Uh, again, by, from all of the data that we collect, um, and I mean, just, just literally from a historical perspective, we've been collecting data since our onset in 2007, We've never gotten rid of a piece of data. Uh, I don't know if there's somebody from a storage vendor in the audience, but uh, uh, it'd be a good account to have. Uh, so we, um, we do this and we, we go through uh, a stack ranking with each of our customers and allow them to understand where do they fit uh, in the market that they try to deliver content to. Um, so in this case, we're looking at uh, total number of tent attempts, video startup failures, uh, you know, buffering sessions, what have you. Um, and we rank our, our customers uh, you know, based on uh, where they're at. Uh, in some cases, um, customers are not doing so terribly. Right? If you average out and you're in the 81st percentile when talking about uh, average bit rate, that's not terrible. 
right? If, excuse me, uh, on the bottom, um, you could see as if uh, from a percentile perspective on Android, um, they are lagging. Uh, they're well behind. They're at the 27th percentile. So again, the idea is uh, there's only, you know, if most of our customers, all of our customers, there are budget constraints. If you have one dollar to spend, um, where are you most likely to spend it? And so what, being able to have contextualized data, this type of benchmarking, allows you to invest your dollars wisely. So um, when we, we take that next step and uh, look at tuning engagement for your business, um, what we see is as the, um, as the screen size literally goes up from uh, small devices to large, uh, and the viewer value, at least for this example, uh, is higher uh, as you move up stack. Um, you have, again, up to the right, uh, your most valuable customer set. And so this is where most of our customers want to end up. So the, uh, the tricky thing about that, of course, excuse me, is, sure, viewer preference uh, and duration goes up as you uh, move to uh, larger devices. Um, the, the issue with that, of course, is so do your costs, so do the complexity to encode with those profiles, to store. Uh, if you're in a multi-CDN environment, you may be encoding and storing twice. Um, now, we all recognize that, uh, that this is something that we have to do. I mean, the key part, though, is being able to find the sweet spot uh, between increasing the, you know, the, the value of your end customer uh, and controlling delivery costs and optimizing. And so, um, obviously, our publisher's profitability depends upon that balancing act. Uh, and, uh, you know, with this iterative publishing process, the, the key is to have that consistent feedback loop so you maximize engagement um, while minimizing the cost to do so. Um, incredibly complex problem, uh, but certainly something that uh, we hear quite a bit about. So, uh, I've mentioned the iterative publishing process. Um, all of our customers have one. Uh, yeah, all of the prospects we're working with uh, have one. Uh, but when we define it, we're talking about, uh, again, that, that virtuous feedback loop. Uh, from Conviva's perspective, we have excuse me, uh, an intelligent control platform. Um, so we give control back to the publisher by giving them this unique view of the video internet. Um, and it's an ongoing process, right? So it's not just, uh, it is real-time data. We, we provide historical data. Um, in, the, in the case of Conviva, the first step would be to be able to monitor. Right? You want to be able to baseline your performance. Um, without Conviva, uh, you might be pulling from CDN logs. Uh, you could be, uh, if you consider a traditional TV uh, audience environment, um, looking at Nielsen ratings. For the web, it's Comscore. For Conviva, um, we truly do understand what users see. Um, so multi-screen, multi-device. Um, we're able to pick up, because we're me measuring the quality of experience, uh, you know, true engagement patterns, which allows our customers to make decisions wisely uh, about where to invest their money. Um, the second part of the process is the, is the benchmarking data I've talked about. Um, it allows you to put things into context. Uh, it allows you to see literally how you stack up. Um, now, without Conviva, I think a lot of our customers depend on maybe industry events like this. Uh, uh, perhaps they read something interesting about Google YouTube. Um, it's, it, honestly, you, you're making decisions based on where you think you have to go, um, but uh, this is incredibly compelling, and it's certainly something that uh, we spend a lot of time and effort on to provide to our customers. Now, the third part of the process is to optimize. Right, once you've been able to baseline, once you've been able to figure out how you compare, uh, now you have to optimize. Uh, you could certainly manually optimize, or you can leverage our real-time decisioning uh, protocols um, to make those viewer-centric decisions in real time. Again, based on that unique uh, situation that viewer is coming from, um, to be able to do that is, imper you know, is imperative. Um, but once you're done optimizing, right, part of the whole continuous feedback loop, it's time to measure again. Uh, you need to understand that the changes you've made uh, actually provide the type of ROI that you expected them to make. Um, and so uh, being able to do all of that, uh, again, is incredibly important. And what sits in the middle uh, of this is, is really this big data processing engine that we have. So um, I'll kind of leave it off with a couple uh, final engagement metrics that we see. 
Uh, again, this is real data that comes from our customers over a period of time. Uh, and whether you're looking at live, live content or VOD, um, delivering a, non, you know, a high quality, uh, non-impacted event literally gives you 48 to 54% more consumption from your, from, excuse me, from your uh, consumers. Um, again, as I said earlier, a lot to be gained, uh, but if you don't do it, right, the, uh, the results are pretty obvious. So, right, doing the math, right, recover that engagement. Um, there's a lot there to, to, to work from. Um, by having this view and being able to spend wisely, you, you reduce the additional cost to deliver, which delivers right, higher return on investment. Um, you know, the, uh, the big message here is you don't want to underwhelm uh, because you've underinvested, but it's just as bad to waste money and overinvest and build too quickly um, without finding that sweet spot. And so where we come in is we help our customers find exactly that. And that's it. Thank you. You want to do questions after? Yeah, I could take questions now uh, if there are any. Please. Well, I wouldn't say Limelight's handicapped. You said that. No, I'm joking. Um, um, well, so our solution is actually embedded at the player level. So we're actually monitoring every single second or every heartbeat uh, of every video that our customers and users consume. Um, so we're actually able to see in real time um, what that end user is experiencing from buffering, startup times. Um, and it gets, we can get incredibly granular into the data so you can slice and dice it. Um, I mean, with Limelight, you're going to get server logs, you're going to get general internet performance, um, but they're only going to be able to see their own network as well. Um, we're able to see holistically across the internet because um, we're obviously you know, monitoring video on behalf of our customers who use Limelight or Akamai or, or Amazon uh, or, or others. So it gives us kind of a unique perspective. Yeah, I think there's somebody out here where we get asked this question quite a bit from our customers. What's that, that one area, that one metric? Uh, honestly, it, it really depends on our customer's environment. Um, and that's why, as part of the process, it's incredibly important for us to understand what's most important to their business and be able to have that baseline understanding. Uh, and then when we're able to apply benchmarking data, we can find the areas where you should invest. Uh, and it's quite compelling in some cases uh, it was obvious beforehand, but it's still something that um, to be able to just literally see, I wouldn't call it a needle in a haystack, uh, but it certainly, uh, it certainly kind of allows them to do exactly that, right? You wisely invest, you see exactly the areas you want to focus on. There may be 20, but how do you stack rank them, right? What's the, what's the biggest problem you're experiencing? And so on. Uh, and so that's how, we, and that's how we do it. Anything else? Yes. So th that's a great question. Um, content absolutely is a very important part of it. Uh, yeah, folks are going to probably tolerate a bit more if they're watching Game of Thrones versus uh, Kelly and Regis. Uh, sorry. It's, um, but so what the important thing from our perspective is if you rule out uh, or identify all of the issues with the delivery ecosystem part of it, then you can focus on other areas. You know, so we have customers all the time that said, well, it's episodic content, it's very popular, they're gonna come anyway and watch it. Um, and they may be right, but until you actually are able to measure against it and actually see it, right, if you rule out the technology side of things, the delivery side of things, then you can focus in on other areas. Maybe it's your distribution partnerships or it is the content itself. Um, so uh, yeah, content has, is a huge part of it. All right, I think that's it. Thank you.